Welcome to Business Unveiled Podcast. This is the place where we help overwhelmed, time-starved entrepreneurs like you make the profitable shifts to get more done and get more out of life. I'm your host, Angela Prophet, award-winning eight-figure entrepreneur and CEO. And in every episode of Business Unveiled, I'm bringing you conversations that will give you the expertise and strategies that will scale your team and business so you can get shit done. That's GSD in our world. So get your time back and grow a business that helps you be present in your life. Let's do this, y'all. Hi, y'all. It's Angela. I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled. I'm super excited about our our guest today because she's going to talk about something that I personally just love. I love to do it. I love putting things out there, specific things on social media. And especially if you've ever listened to me or watched anything we do, I love video because it's a great way to connect with your target audience. It's just a great way for people to really see who you are as a person and how you can help them solve the problem that they might have. So Brandy, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Angela, for having me. I am so excited to talk about this topic. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited. And I know what you're thinking, guys. Now, listen, if you don't love video, (laughs) you need to be listening to this more than people who are already doing video. Okay. Like you, if you, if you own a business, you're not going to be able to run from it because Mm -hmm. there's been so many changes. And depending on when you watch or listen to this video is just going to become more and more prominent in the marketing space. And so it's really important that you educate yourself on these things. But before we jump off and start, and start talking about social media and Instagram and reels and videos, I don't know about you, Brandy, but this shit didn't exist when I started my business. <laughs> Me so, neither. Can you tell us where you started a little bit about your journey of how have you gotten to where you are? Because you're really a Insta reels gal and an expert. So, but what, what's gotten you there? Yeah. So I'm actually a wedding planner in Orlando, Florida. I own a wedding consulting company. There's a team of six of us and that started 14 years ago. So I sound like a dinosaur, but Instagram didn't even exist when we started our business. And so, you know, I have to say, I have to just be super honest. If anybody out there is listening and you're like, I just can't get behind Instagram. Neither could I for years. We did not have a social presence. Um, then we started one for blush, which is my planning company. But I was like, I'm never getting on Instagram. You know, I'll share some pictures of my kids on Facebook, but that's it. I'm not doing this whole social media thing. And then you start to realize you can't fight it. You know, as a business owner, you have to take advantage of the platforms that are there for you. And when I started my business, I don't know about you, Angela, but we used to spend about $20,000 a year in paid advertising because there wasn't another option. You had to pay to put your, you know, ad in a magazine and online and all these things. And now business owners just simply don't have to do that. They have no barrier to entry, no middleman between them and the consumer. And that's what social media is. So once I started realizing that it was really not until the fall of 2019 that I started my own account. And that was because I really wanted to start teaching other wedding pros how to build a business like we had built and to be able to really kind of get out of the day to day, you know, get some freedom in your life, avoid the burnout. And my husband was like, you've got to get on Instagram. You can't keep avoiding it. So you guys, depending on when you're listening to this, I mean, two years I've had an Instagram account. Okay. So it has not been long. And the first time I even showed my face on video, I sweat through my shirt. I threw up when we got off. I did a live video. I literally walked in the bathroom and threw up. It was so crazy, but I I knew I had to do it. You know, so when people say, oh, I don't do video just because it's not my thing. Like I'm not that comfortable with it. And I'm like, I mean, you got to get comfortable with it. I'm sorry, but that is the way the world's going. Short form video isn't just reels and Instagram. It's TikTok, which we all know, but it's also Pinterest has video pins now that trend way higher than regular pins. YouTube has shorts. I mean, every single platform is creating short form video. So can't hide from it anymore. So I made myself learn it. And the reason I've kind of become, I guess in our industry, in the wedding industry, I've become kind of known as the reels person to go to is because 
I teach it in a way that's like, listen, you have a hundred other things to do. We don't want you spending an hour making a reel. That's not a good return on your investment. You need to be able to make them in five minutes, stick your camera, put your face up, make a cute reel, use a trending audio, and let's move on with life. <laughs> so that's really what I teach is how to incorporate it into your business in a way that's going to give you a super high return for the time that you invest in it. Yeah. And you know, there's that saying, I say it all the time, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. And there are some people that I know and <laughs> accounts that we have where they put it on other people. So for example, a friend of mine owns a marketing company. She doesn't love video, but her clientele is very different. It's not service-based. It's like toilet paper, Charmin and McDonald's, right? <laughs> So, I mean, okay, but they need marketing too. Yeah. And so she has an employee take over for a week and she has a really big team. And mm -hmm. so once she cycles through, you've almost made it through well over six to eight weeks of, of people just sharing like insights about their job, what they're working on, their dogs, great. their yeah. kids, you know, they're able to share whatever they want. Yes. But it also opens everybody up to being exposed. <laughs> and, Very true. You know, it's like, don't feel like you just have to do it yourself. Like right. there are, there's so many groups, friend groups. There's mm -hmm. so many groups out there that of people who are terrified of video, psychologically yes. just terrified yes. of it. And, and guess what though? Like when you stay in your comfort zone, you're not going to grow. Yep. And so you've, like you said, you've got to just, just do it. Yeah. And now it's like, I literally like some of our clients are like, but you just do it all the time. I'm like, but I didn't <laughs> start out like that. But me and my phone have a conversation multiple times a day. Oh yeah. You know, it's just like, I'm used to it now. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like starting anything new. It, it's a little nerve wracking, but there's definitely strategy mm -hmm. and there's, there's definitely a more productive way to do it. And what I would encourage any Buddy, listening or watching, if you scroll and mm -hmm. you're not creating content, like you're in violation of like your time. Yeah. Like I will set a timer and I do like to scroll on TikTok, but, mm -hmm. and I do like reels, but no more than 30 minutes. Like after yeah. 30 minutes, like I literally set a timer on my Apple watch. And when it buzzes, it's like, mm -hmm. if I'm not going to spend the next 30 minutes creating the content, then I need to move on to something else because it yeah. is a rabbit hole. <laughs> but it's fun. Like it, it can be so freaking fun. Yeah. And so I know we're all so busy Yeah. and you guys always hear me like GSD, GSD, and I know <laughs> you don't want a GSD shit that you don't like doing, but what are some ways that people can make time to fit yeah. something else in? Cause it's just another thing. It really is. And it's like, yeah. where the hell do we focus our time? Like what well, can some people do? Yeah. I mean, I think that this is such a great question because everyone says that they're like, ah, no more stuff, but here's the thing. I don't know how many people in the audience can resonate with this, but I bet you there's going to be a lot of hands going up that, you know, you sit down at your computer and you create content for your social media because someone told you, you have to be present on Instagram. So you spend maybe an hour or two hours a week, or you pay a social media company to develop these static graphic posts, right. That are so boring. And I don't get me wrong. I do them too. Like we, they're necessary, but the return is so little. And it, when you start to use reels, I think the reason that people love them once they start it, there's, you know, it's, they've got to get started. It's addicting because it works. So all of a sudden you make a reel and you see that there's, you know, 800 views, which isn't even that many for a reel, but I don't know anybody who's got 800 views on their story on a normal day, you know, unless you have tons and tons of followers. So you can have a thousand followers and have 10,000 views on a reel and get tons of followers from that. So, you know, I think what's most important is for us to first reframe our mindset is that you know, for so long, it's been, I've got to create content and it has to have the perfect caption. It has to have the perfect branding in it. And my grid has to look awesome. And those days are really going away. And a lot of that reason too, is because reels, except for big brands like McDonald's and things like that, reels really can't be called in. You know, if you have a social media team, they can create their batching a month ago for things that are going, you know, you don't even, you created stuff six weeks ago for what's going out today. Right but reels aren't like that. You have to show up. So it kind of has to be you. It makes it more personal. And so that's really the biggest reason why I'm like, get out of your own way, 
you know, reframe your mindset to say, well, if I'm going to spend an hour doing grid posts, maybe instead of that, maybe I'll spend a half an hour doing grid posts and I'll spend 30 minutes doing reels, you know, try one a week. The, the biggest thing is that when you start trying it, there's two things I would say, one, be consistent. So don't post one and then never post again. <laughs> Or post one and you only got 200 views. So then you're like defeated, you know, don't do that. Post consistently. So if it's going to be one a week, post one a week for eight weeks, give it a good go, give it a shot. Because once the algorithm starts picking up that you're posting, you're going to start to see the return on it. People will follow you. You know, that's, that's really what you're wanting from it. And so give it, give it a strong go, but just reframe that mindset. That's really what I want you guys to think about. Yeah, that. And, and I mean, you said it best a few minutes ago, like marketing and the ads are, <laughs> which, you know, when I was in events, we, I mean, we're in a small town while Nashville has grown. It is still a good old boy <laughs> country town. Yep, like I yep. grew up here. And so luckily with us just through word of mouth, but when I started building sales funnels and when I started doing things uh, like online courses and writing books and doing more service-based products, you're hundred percent, right. You have to run ads and you, you have, have to, to spend money yeah, yeah. to get people into your pipeline. Yeah. And so with social media, which we always have to remember, it was meant to be social. Yes. It wasn't meant for a bunch of fake bots <laughs> to like put a bunch of shit out there, yeah. which, you know, we all try to do it. But it, it's a way to give people a little bit, however much you let them, you know, mm -hmm. inside to your life. And I remember when Facebook Live first came out and I had a brand strategist and manager I was working with. And he's like, now on all your events and weddings, you've got to put it on the timeline to do a Facebook Live. And then, you know, when stories came out and I'm like, you've got to be effing kidding me. I don't even yeah. have time to pee. Right. Much not less, at a wedding. <laughs> you want me to pull out a camera and a baby Osmo and like walk around? I'm like, you're, you're crazy. Yeah. And he's like, no, you're crazy. You don't understand. If you don't, someone mm -hmm. else in your industry will do it. They will become the thought leader because they're exposing themselves. And you who've had, who has 20 years of experience, not sharing that or giving little tidbits and nuggets. Like those are the people that are winning. They may not have yeah. the experience that you have, but they're exposing themselves. And so I thought about, it and I'm like, oh shit, okay, we're going to build it into the timeline. And so, but I started to hire more people to like help me execute. Yes. And then we started to grow our intern team as well. So we could teach them while mm -hmm. we're doing videos. So, you know, it's like wash, rinse, repeat your stuff. And then with Instagram and stories, I never got into Snapchat, but he's like, you got to do this story thing. I'm like, uh, -uh I'm only seeing it once. And if the shit disappears, I, that's just not productive. <laughs> he's like, you're missing yeah. the point. That's the point. It's yeah. like FOMO. I'm like, what the hell is that? He's right. like fear of missing out. And I'm like, oh, I don't have that. I don't give a shit. Yeah. And he's like, but Angela, think about it. He's like, mm -hmm. if there's something that you really love, you want to be in the know about certain things. And if it's going to disappear and you only have 24 hours to get in on it, like, don't you want in on it? If it's something that you really care about, like if Apple is releasing a new phone or a new product, don't you want to be the first to know about it? I'm like, okay, you're yes. right. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, so that's, it's just important. Like, and so having a different strategy because Instagram specifically, there's like 10 different ways, mm -hmm. but did you see the post? Uh, it's probably maybe two or so months ago where one of their leadership, I don't know if he's the CEO <laughs> or CEO. He's like, we're not going to prioritize photos anymore. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a thing. I mean, guys, Instagram came right out and said it. We've known this since they rolled out reels. Like, mm -hmm. let's be real. All the mm -hmm. accounts were being prioritized that were doing reels consistently, but now they came out and finally said it. They just came right out and said it. And to be honest, you know, I also kind of think as you were talking, I was thinking, yes, this is so true. You know, you want to only put your effort where you're getting the most return on your, on your time. And so, you know, I think that we forget about that too. We think, oh, there's another social media thing. So now I have to spread myself even more thin, but it's like, think about that for a second. If, if grid posts aren't working for you anymore, if they're not converting, then I, this is my personal opinion, but I tell all of my students, I'm like, listen, I would rather you do three reels a week and stop posting on your grid 
and see if it makes a difference. I, I know it's going to make a difference. So I wouldn't tell you to do it, but, but just yeah. see what the return is because you could spend less than the time it takes you to make those grid posts to do reels. And you're going to get such a bigger return. So it's really, really important for you to always be evaluating, you know, when we used to pay for advertising or not when we used to, but you know, when that was yeah. a thing, a big thing, you always had to also check your return on investment then. And that was a return on your money, but this is a return on your time. And that's just as important, if not more important, because time can't be renewed. Right. So it, yep. we really need to consider that is what is your return? So if you're spending all this time doing things that aren't working, stop doing them, just stop doing them. So you're not really adding something else to your plate, see what's not working and see if you can replace that time with this, with reels. So this goes into something really important, um, is to actually a make sure you have the right account and that you're actually looking at your analytics. So yes. can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. So this is super interesting because people get incredibly frustrated that we still don't have reels insights a year later. Um, we have baby insights, I would call them and not even all accounts have them, but you know, we can at least see things like how many saves it had, how many shares it had. And we all know saves and shares are like the golden nugget of Instagram. If you can get somebody to save or share your post. So you can see that on your insights, which is really helpful. But what I look for is I look for engagement. So you can go right into your normal insights and you can see what your engagement is over, you know, period of time. So if I post a reel, I'll check maybe 48 hours later and see what my total engagement is or my accounts reached. And then a really easy one is just to look at your follower count. And I also, this is something that's really, really important. I look at the followers who were the new followers, because here's the thing, you guys, this is also <laughs> something that I get insane about. We don't want to create viral reels. It, that's not the goal. Now for some companies, like if you were creating maybe a clothing line or you had a product that anyone could have a viral reel is great. But if you create a viral reel and you get a hundred new followers, you're like, yeah, this is awesome. Well, if they're just a bunch of yahoos that have nothing to do with your business, that's not actually helpful. It's going to tank your engagement. So you really want to concentrate on making content that's going to draw in your ideal customer. And so when you start looking through those followers that come and follow you, it's a little more manual because you have to look at them, but make sure like for me, I'm a, I'm a business coach now for wedding professionals. So when I go through my new followers on my account, I'm constantly looking to make sure all of them are event professionals. And I don't delete people that aren't necessarily, but I'm also looking for bots and things like that because I want to know, Hey, that piece of content really did not land the way I wanted it to. Like I made a real this summer about one of my teenagers and it was goofy and silly. It had nothing to do with business. It went completely viral, which was fun to watch. Um, but I got like 300 followers that were random, like so random. I was getting messages and I was like, this is not what I, I don't want to keep creating content like this. You know, it's fun once in a while. But ultimately what you're trying to do is use your reels as a funnel to create sales, which is really what all of your social media should be doing is it should be strategic and it should be creating dollars in your pocket. So we don't do it for fun and for views. We do it to get the right eyes on our product or our service. Well, exactly. And, and you also have to take a step back and like you said, look and see like, what is your product or mm -hmm. your service, which is service is still a product. You guys, yes. it's like, if you do, like you said, have a clothing line or a new water bottle or a new coffee, like something that everybody can use mm -hmm. going viral is great because you can reach those potential people who are going to buy and maybe yeah. gift and buy for other people. Yeah. But the biggest thing I see too, is even on some of the viral videos is there's no call to action. Oh my gosh. And so I'm like, who, <laughs> who is helping these people? Yes. And they don't know what they don't know sometimes. And like, sometimes I'm actually like, there was a bra that I saw and I'm uh -huh. like, actually, and I was like looking in the post. I'm like, is this an ad? Is this, yeah. um, I'm like, where can I find it? And so I DM'd the, the, the girl and she was like, oh, that's on, you know, this website. And I'm like, oh, well, in the future, consider putting that out there. And, and before you put it out there, make sure you have an affiliate with them and then use right? your affiliate link. Oh like, my gosh. Yes, we, people. Yeah. I mean, it's like, that's the thing now. So it's mm -hmm. like, there are some companies 
like the brand deals that you hear of that will partner with people. But the ones that we see, Mm -hmm. like the return on investment that do really well are within like your brand niche of where you have a target audience. I'd rather have a hundred people that are engaged that are taking the tips or actually doing something, you know, than a million people, like you said, who are doing nothing. Yeah. And it really, I had something similar happen to me where, you know, people are like, you don't have kids. I'm like, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews and I'm very involved in their life. And so on our story, like we'll do fun stuff and I'll do some reels with them. And then I have all these freaking teenagers following me who have no money to spend (laughs) and like, is not my target audience at all. Right. And I mean, maybe in a few years I could hire some of them to like help (laughs) do content and posts, but you know, who knows? But, and then it's like, I'm not going to follow them back. I'm not going to engage with them. And so then it's like, they'll eventually unfollow and then things start going down. Mm-hmm. Your number's going down. It's not a bad thing. Like, no. like you're saying, it yeah. is making sure you have the right people. And also too, I want to say, it doesn't always have to be you. Like we have a team member that goes in every single day. They do exactly what you're saying. They look and see who's followed. If it makes sense, we'll follow back. We will message them, ask them, how are they GSD? How are they making an impact? Like start a conversation. Yeah. And, and if you're not going to do that, then you're not following the breadcrumbs. Someone yep. followed you because they liked what you said. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that's really considered a lead. <laughs> like, yes. Why are you leaving it there? Yeah. Do you have any tips for that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I really want, um, I kind of want you guys to picture a funnel. This is so, it, I love teaching this because it's like, if you can really picture a funnel, you know, for a coach, we typically are using like ads for, you know, top of funnel, but it, you guys, this is free. Okay. So this is free advertising reels go out to people that are not following you already. Well, I mean, they, your followers see it too, but it's the only way organically that you can have new eyes looking at your material. So you have to think about it as like, it's the very tip top of your funnel. So if you can get the right eyes on that reel, so you're using hashtags that make sense for your industry, you're creating content that's either educating that perfect person that you want to see, or you're entertaining them. Like you're, you're kind of making them feel an emotion. That's like, yeah, I feel like that too. So you want to make sure that you're kind of getting the right eyes on it, then that's where your grid posts can come in handy. Right. So if you can get them to watch one of your reels and then go, Oh my gosh, I kind of like this girl. Like she's kind of fun. And so then they come to your profile. Now what's your profile say immediately, they're going to take two seconds to view your profile. You've got a tiny little bio. Do they, can they resonate with it? Or do you provide what they're looking for? Or do they just think this is great content, right? So you have to have a great profile And then you want to feed them a little bit more meat with your grid posts. So if you can still do grid posts, great, or more reels, you just want to make sure there's more content there for them to chew on. And then the idea is that those calls to action. So I'm in the wedding industry. So for us, I like to have our calls to action be go to our blog, go to our blog, go to our blog. Cause my, I want to get them to go to my website. Cause if I can get them to my website, then I can kind of get to know more about who we are and I can get them to book a consult. So when I'm making reels, I'm like real to feed, to blog post, to consult. Like that's exactly how we're trying to move them through the funnel. And that's how we come up with our content as well. So, you know, if I make a blog about five things to pack for your photographer on wedding day, I'm going to make at least two reels about that same topic with different, you know, audio, do it a little bit fun each time, but that's what you're doing is you're really just trying to keep these people like moving through the funnel, moving through the funnel, moving through the funnel and educating them. So the ideal situation is that you just make them top of funnel and then just keep going all the way to your website, book a consult. And then from there it's on you, you got to close them, but (laughs) we got them that far with your social media. But another thing too, like Angela was talking about not having a call to action. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is by far the number one mistake that people make on all their social media, not just reels. But sometimes we think about reels as like, oh, it's just supposed to be fun and entertaining. Yes, it is supposed to be entertaining, but it's also supposed to move them through that funnel. So on your text, on your reel, it's great if you can say peep the caption or see below or see why in the caption or whatever, get them to open the caption and then tell them what to do. What do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to the link in your bio? Do you want them to DM you? Do you want them to double tap? Do you want them to share with a friend? Like there's a million things you can have them do, especially if you make an educational one, 
saying share with a friend, this would be helpful for, you know, share with somebody you love, or for us, we say share with an engaged friend, because a lot of people seeing our stuff aren't necessarily engaged, but they know people who are. And so that's a really great idea too, is share with an engaged friend. So always be thinking, what do you want them to do from it? And it could be as simple as double tap. That's easy, you know? So yeah, always have a call to action, strong call to action. (laughs) Yeah. And like that, I mean, the point is, it's like to get people to connect with you. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we've had some clients say, well, I don't want to be salesy and I don't, and I'm like, then why the, f- why are you, <laughs> why are you doing it? <laughs> what? I like, know. And you know, I say that it's so funny, Angela, you said that I posted a reel right before we got on this recording and it's probably one of the more ballsy reels that I've posted because I don't like to boast (laughs) a lot, but I'm, I'm pitching my coaching. And so I'm like, I've got to let people know, like, do you want this same lifestyle? Do you want what I've built? So it's hard to put yourself out there, but here's what you have to remember. You are not a salesperson. You are a solution finder. Somebody out there is thinking like, this is what I had to tell myself. I literally had to have a pep talk with myself before I posted it. I said, you know, there are wedding professionals out there that were you five years ago that are like, I'm burnt out. I'm overwhelmed. I'm fried. I'm tired. And I don't know if I can keep doing this. And you now have the solution to their problem. Like, you know how to do it. You've been there. You've built that. And so to me, it was like, I'm not, I'm not selling somebody anything. I'm providing them a solution to the problem that they have. And so when you don't do that, you could be, you know, missing out on an opportunity to help someone. So if you kind of reframe that mindset too, I think it helps a lot um, to be able to say, Hey, I can help you. And no matter what you're selling, you know, if you sell a widget, somebody needs a widget, you know, (laughs) so whatever, make make it the best dang widget they've ever seen and keep going. Yeah. That's so important. Just the mindset of like telling yourself, like, I'm not being a salesperson, you saw, like you said, you solve a problem Yeah. and someone out there has the problem that you've had. And, you know, especially in the wedding industry, I think of a couple years ago, a a plan, a big planner in Nashville, Mm -hmm. um, you know, took her life because of there was so much stress and so much expectation that Pinterest had brought on. And, and it's like, just so overwhelming. And a lot of people in the industry, like, we're creatives. We're not Mm -hmm. running. I mean, I didn't (laughs) sign up to do this, to run a business and build an empire. Like, you know, you kind of have to learn those things the hard way, but guess who helped me know that freaking coaches. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. (laughs) And if they did, if you didn't have a coach, like I literally say all the time, like there are some men coaches I've had who had nothing to do with this industry. Mm -hmm. They literally probably saved my life. Like I would stroke out. I would not know how to take care of myself. So you know, you're depriving someone from that knowledge that you have. And so thinking of it that way that you could potentially save a life. And I'm being serious. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know I'm sarcastic and I'm like, I'd like to have fun and be funny, but like, I'm dead ass serious. Like you, you whatever problem you're solving or your widget could yeah. end up saving someone's life. Like you never know. Mm-hmm. So don't hold back or be embarrassed. The times where I, where I will say that we've had some people, I'm like, are you not confident you're in product? Is, yes. is that why you're, mm-hmm. you don't want to post? Like if you've helped one person, then you know, you have something. Yes. So yeah, why not you have impact? You, yeah, you can make exactly. an impact on somebody. Yeah. And yeah. you guys, I think it's really important too, that you, you know, with reels or with really any kind of video, it's a different way to connect to your buyer. You know, they can feel who you are as a person. And that's a big deal because, you know, I, in our industry, I teach really almost an identical curriculum to another wedding pro who's actually a really good friend of mine, but we are the most opposite human beings that existed on planet earth. And so it's important that it's not just what you teach, but it's also you, you know, so video gives you that ability to kind of connect with somebody, even audio, you can hear our voices through here. You kind of hear who we are, our personality written word does not give you that ability. And, um, I was telling Angela before the show, I was like, I love reels so much because I'm a super, I'm a very, very conservative buttoned up person in business. I'm not really that way in life that much, but I'm fairly goofy and reels kind of gives me that opportunity to be more goofy than I normally would on like stories or in a written post. I can kind of get a little more 
kitschy or like say you should not be doing this period end of conversation utter real where yeah. I wouldn't necessarily use the harsh words and so I think that they're a really fun way of of letting people into who you are as well as a business owner so do you think it's a fad you know what I don't it's so funny that so many people have asked this I and here's the thing even if it is this is this is my typical answer it was you know when it first came out even if it is ride the freaking wave, you know, oh. like clubhouse. I jumped on the clubhouse train early. I rode that wave for six months. And while I'm really not involved a lot over there anymore, because I feel like the wave has definitely died down and I'm a big return on my time kind of person. It, it changed my business. I was over there every single day. I invested in people. I met new people. It connected me with speaking opportunities. I would have never had before, um, new students that are coming to find me all because of an app that blew up and went crazy. And so who cares if it's a fad, right? Ride, ride the wave as long as it gives you a return. And then when it stops giving you a return, move on. It's kind of like, I, honestly, it's like paid advertising. I mean, a yep. lot of us are, you know, did like magazine and just the old fashioned paid advertising. And now it's like, eh, it's not giving you the return it did 10 years ago, you know, or even five years ago for that matter. So you should always be evaluating that. And so that's kind of my answer to that is I don't really care if it's a fad for now yeah, I'm writing it. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> and if you're having fun doing it, like yeah. once you get com or you can get comfortable doing things on yeah. video, like it really is like have fun with it. And listen, the more people that see you, you're going to have rude ass trolls. Like oh my gosh. that means you've actually kind of made it. <laughs> so don't take it personal. Like always from a psychology angle, I'm like, I'll pray for them because yeah. clearly I caught their attention, but clearly they're unhappy. Yeah. And so it makes them feel more powerful to say something negative or come at me but don't keep the good knowledge that you have away because you're afraid of what people are going to think mm -hmm. because the right person will show up like if yes. you're consistent. So the big question everybody wants to know is how do you freaking make money doing this? <laughs> or can you? you really can. I mean, and it really is all about that funnel mentality because you know, what you're trying to do is, is get those people, the right eyes on the right product at the right time, right? That's marketing 101, right? So you're trying to get the right eyes on your reel. You're trying to move them through the funnel. And what I always like to say too, so for blush, which is our planning company, you know, it, it is a little bit different than me as a coach. You know, we have to use different strategies for blush. We close a lot of business in our DMS because a lot of our call to actions will be you know, DM us if you're interested or share with an engaged friend. Well, engaged friend is like, oh my gosh, my bridesmaid sent me this and I love it. And I, I'm so interested in you guys, you know, how you turn it into sales is we also have to understand that the world buys differently. So, you know, I was just talking to a student yesterday who said, I refuse to answer leads in my DMS. And I was like, I've literally built a pillar of my business on teaching people how to sell in their DMS. Like you're killing me. And she was like, you know, it just messes up my workflow. And I'm like, tough, because the thing is, is that yes, we love our workflows and we love our automations and I get it. I get it. It's frustrating to have people in your DMS, but there's no barrier between you and that person when they're in your DMS, it's just you and them, they're hot, they're ready to buy. So if you can say DM us for more information or DM us, if you, you know, want to know more, whatever it is, if you can get them into your DMS. Oh my gosh, you've, you've got a hot lead right there. A lot of our clients are also buying from their phones. So you have to consider that there's a lot of mobile activity going on. And so if you email them, <laughs> especially a long email, you may have a harder time. Like people don't respond to emails as quickly as they do their DMs. You know, they might not be answering emails at midnight, but they're on their Instagram. So you can DM them back and forth. So those are things I really want you to think about. The other thing too, is that always be strategic. And that, that really just goes for all of your social media. And we kind of touched on this earlier, but you just should not be posting anything that doesn't move them through your funnel. And so I always tell people to think about it like this. You should only be posting reels that either educate, inspire, or evoke emotion. And educate's really the easiest one. And I give you guys a tip. So when I'm out and about doing, 
whatever, if I'm working with a client for coaching or at a wedding, I will keep a note in my phone and it just says tips for content. And it's, if I am working with a student and they say something that I'm like, oh my gosh, if one more student says this, I write that down and I make a reel out of it. You know, it's like, what do you want people to know that you wish tons of people could know? And so whatever you make or whatever you do, keep a note in your phone. I trust me, you will have content ideas for days if you just write things down throughout your day. But when you sit down to make content, you know, it's like that blank screen of death and you're just like, I don't know what to write about. Well, of course you don't get, keep a note in your phone. And so that'll help you a lot. So that's how I tell people to make money from reels is be open to DMS, be open to other ways of doing business, but no matter what the right eyes on the right content at the right time, the right product, like that's what you're trying to do. So be strategic in what you're making reels about. Amen. And I was one of those girls a few years ago where I'm like, if it can't go into our automation funnel, uh-huh. I even had a pop back. I, in fact, I think on Facebook, we still do have a pop back yeah, that says too. like, you know, due to the level of hack communication, like if you need something immediate, like please yeah. email us. Yeah. And, but I had to reframe my mindset and instead of trying to change the buying pattern mm-hmm. of the person DMing, just hiring someone that could monitor those every single day. Well, five days a week, not seven days a week. (laughs) But it also depends on who your target, because I know when we were planning a lot of weddings, our target audience was online Friday, Saturday, and Sunday (laughs) because they're planning their wedding. But then that's our busiest time when we're executing events. So I had to hire someone. I didn't have to, but I chose to hire someone who would answer the stuff on Pinterest and engage with people and make sure that they were like, you know, we have a whole pre-qualification thing now. Yeah. And then once you get them as a client, you know, then you can get them into your process. But it's like meet people where they are. Just meet I mean, them where they are. It, it really can't be more true. And I know that people cringe when they hear it because they're just like, no, Brandy, please don't make me do this. And I'm like, you know, here's the thing. Think about your own buying habits. If you see something you like on Instagram and you DM the person and they write you right back, or, you know, they meet you right back there in your DMS and they have the conversation with you right there. How likely are you to choose them? You are because they're having a conversation. It's more personal than email. You're not sending them PDFs and, you know, some long history of your company. And so it's, it's just a really warm lead typically. And so not taking them advantage, you know, not taking advantage of that is, is a, it's a poor choice, but I'm with you, Angela. I did. I did the same thing. I told our team. I'm like, Oh no, no, no. If they don't come through our email, if they don't come through our lead form. Forget it. I'm not doing it. Um, and yeah, so there's that. <laughs> you got to change. If you, you want to resolve, you got to change. You got to change. Yeah. So yeah. you have a toolkit that you have put together for our listeners or for yeah. really anybody that needs help. If you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I did create the real traffic toolkit and it is, it's such a fun course. I love it. It's really fun to just like, I'm pretty goofy in it, to be honest. And (laughs) I only wanted to do it in one take. So there's a lot of craziness in it, but it's just a step-by-step. You can see my screen the whole time. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. I say it's like reels for dummies. It's literally like open your phone, touch the Instagram, you know, and it helps you to know exactly how to make a reel, how to put time to text on it, um, how to batch reels. And then there's also 150 content ideas in there so that you can never run out of ideas. So there's tons and tons and tons of ideas to get you started. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It makes reels super easy. So yeah. So you can grab that over at offers.brandygar.com. I love it. And we'll put it in the show notes too. So if you're driving or biking or working (laughs) out, because I know that we all multitask while we're listening or watching podcasts, I know I do, then we'll put it in the show notes to make it easy for you guys to connect. So I'm assuming your favorite platform, if they want to connect directly with you is Instagram. (laughs) You're how did you guess that? How did you guess it, Angela? (laughs) Yeah, I'm, I'm on all the platforms at Brandy Gar, but Instagram, I'm super committed to my DMS. I love being in there. Um, if you have any questions about what we talked about, or you're just like, Hey, I'm stuck. I'm not sure how to do this. I love answering questions. So don't hesitate. Just jump over to Instagram, DM me. I promise you'll get a response pretty quickly. 
Awesome. This was so, so helpful. And again, if you're listening or watching and you just don't want to give it a try, I hope that you walked away today yeah. knowing how important this is moving forward. So Brandy, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me, Angela. This is great. And if you're listening or watching, be sure to tune in next week to another episode of Business Unveiled. Bye, y'all. Bye. That's it for this week's episode of Business Unveiled. Now that you have all the tools that you need to conquer the world and GSD, get shit done, would you share this with your friends and fellow business leaders? One thing that would really, really help us and help new listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a comment in Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in and listen to Business Unveiled. You can check out the show notes at angelaprofit.com slash podcast and link up with us on social media so you can share your biggest insights and I want to know your aha moments. Until next week, remember the profitable shifts and structures you're creating in your business help you be more present in your life. So get out there and GSD.